Well, good morning. Happy Thursday morning. It's a very cool morning this morning. As I looked at my temperature, I felt the house when I got up. Oh man, 30 degrees outside. And uh, in our house, as I know, a bit warmer, but still the heater's kicked on. Uh, it is getting to be that time of year as things get cold and uh, yeah, it changes. Uh, so stay warm, uh, stay inside where it's a, a bit uh, bit safer from all the elements outside and pray for those uh, who have to live outside, the, uh, those who are homeless. Think about ways you can uh, care for them and encourage them. Uh, also today, keeping your prayers, my daughter Abby is flying home. There is much rejoicing in this house. She was supposed to come home tomorrow, but her class got canceled. So she's catching an earlier flight and uh, be picking her up late, late tonight at the airport. So there is a lot of rejoicing and cleaning and, and doing uh, laundry and sheets and all those things before she heads back home. But she'll be home for a little over a week and a half uh, for her school's Thanksgiving break. And so today I got my Bible with me, but I want to say I, I don't have the right Bible. The right Bible is our uh, youth gathering Bible. We uh, went to youth gathering, Dylan, myself, uh, Tommy, and Ben, and, and Joe. And we had an awesome time this last summer down in Houston. And the theme was, in all things. And it was how all things, everything comes together in Christ. And all things find their, 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 their definition, their, their, their root, their purpose in him. Well, that theme, in all things, is actually part of our reading for this coming Sunday. Uh, it's our epistle lesson. And so I want to share with you uh, a, a bit of devotion. Now, this one I got out of Lutheran Hour Ministries. Uh, I, this is actually a shirt I got from the gathering. It says, uh, LCMS Youth Gathering, Houston, Texas. Uh, a reminder of a, a wonderful time. They, I got this shirt. I think the, the boys each got this shirt, but they might have cut the sleeves off because they like the muscle shirts before I digress too much. Uh, but the, te the devotion I have today is uh, called Take Another Look. Take another look. It's put out by Lutheran Art Ministries. It's always a great morning devotion. And it begins with this from Colossians 1. Excuse me. I feel like I was going to sneeze, but I guess. <coughs> excuse me. Ah, oh, live streaming. You get me sneezing too. I'm sorry. The, the, uh, devotion, or the text is from Colossians 1, verses 13 to 20. He, God, has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in everything he might have preeminence. For in him all the fullness of God is pleased to dwell, and through him rec to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Here ends the word of the Lord. Now, for most of us, Jesus is a very familiar person. We talk to him when we are in trouble. We hear his cross around our necks. We wear, sorry, we wear his cross around our necks. Uh, we wear a ring. You see me wear a ring sometimes with a cross on it. My dad gave me when I was ordained. And we celebrate his birth, especially at Christmas time and his resurrection at Easter. We always talk about Jesus. We know Jesus. We talk about being our best friend. And, you know, that's all fine and good. And yet... It happens sometimes that we forget the other side. I mean, Jesus is our best friend, our, our buddy we can go to all the time. But he is also the awesome, incredible, amazing. He is the almighty God. And let's be honest, that part scares us. It's a scary part. I mean, who is Jesus? Well, first of all, he is the image of the invisible God. That means that if you want to know what God looks like, you can just look at Jesus I mean, think about that. I mean, we can't look. We don't have photos. But look at what Jesus does. Look what he says. Look how he acts. If you want to see what God is like, look at Jesus. Now, more than that, he is the one who created everything, who was created through. So John chapter 1, Jesus is the word, the word who spoke all things into being. I kind of think of it as a... As I was thinking, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, changing my sermon idea a little bit this is Sunday, but like a camera. When you take a camera, what do you have? You have a lens in the front, right? It sees everything before you. And that lens narrows down the image to a little tiny focus. And then it expands it back out 
to to the uh, to the negative, or well, I'm, I'm talking old school camera, not uh, digital cameras, and it and it gives you the image. So everything in front of you is brought down to a point to then be refracted, reflected back to the the negative that the image is going to be upon. Jesus is that focal point. Everything flows through him and for him, and everything was made through him, for him, and for his purposes. Think about Jesus as you know, as like almost a prism. You have the light come into it, and it gets broadened out to all the other colors. He is that single focal point that holds everything together, that causes everything to be. So everything was created through him. And not just human beings, but all things, all things in all of creation, from the highest angel to the lowest germ, <laughs> he was there before anything else was, from all eternity. And the Father created all things for Jesus. Think about that. Everything in this world is created for him. We were created for him. The trees, the sun, the moon, everything was created for him so that he would be in a, that relationship. He would have fellowship with us. And even today, Jesus still holds all things together. He always will. And he keeps it going day by day. He keeps the sun uh, uh, burning and going around. He keeps the earth rotate. He keeps us breathing. He he keeps us because he's the thing that connects all of us together. And day by day, minute by minute, and the fullness of God dwells, lives in him. You see this man of Nazareth, this man hanging on a cross, here is God. Now that comes down kind of the thud when you think about the cross, doesn't it? The God who is everywhere and holds everything together who's eternal, who's omniscient, who's omnipotent, who's omnipresent, well, he makes peace by the blood of his cross. And that, jar, that should like jar us awake because it is this God, no one else, who has chosen you to be his own. I mean, this God who all things are created for him and through him and by him, all things now he goes to the cross to reconcile you back to him, to bring you, his beloved child, sinful as you are, back to him. And so this God has chosen you. He's chosen you to be his own. His treasured possession is what I hear Malachi describe in our Old Testament reading this weekend. God is nobody smaller. His blood on the cross saves you. His resurrection of the dead gives you life. You see, the God who is over all, above all, in all, who is almighty, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, comes and takes on your flesh and mine. He does that so he might go to the cross knowing full well what it would be. Knowing full well the whole purpose is to bring us, his creatures, his creation, back to him. To reconcile us, to redeem us, to rescue us, to save us from sin, from death, and from the devil. Now, and here's the thing. And I told you about the big image coming down to that focal point of the camera and then being spared by God. How do we take all this in? I mean, we have volumes of theologians have written about Jesus because there's so much. It, 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 he is God. He encompasses everything that God is. He is the image of God. So how do we grab, grasp all these things? Well, to be honest, I don't know if we can. I mean, I've gone to seminary for four years. We have people who've gone there for 10, 12 years. We have people who work at seminary. And they still are trying to grapple with everything that Jesus is. But it is good for us every so often to remember the less familiar side of our Lord. Yes, Jesus is our best friend. Yes, Jesus is the one who, who was born of Mary. Yes, Jesus is the one who suffered and died, who, who healed lepers, who gave sight to the blind, and who made the, the lame to walk. He did all of that, and yet he is with us here today. What we're reminded of is he is in all things. He is much broader and much greater than we can ever fully wrap our minds around. But the joyful news of that is the God who is so far above us, the God who truly has all things. He chooses you. He chooses you to be his beloved child. And in order to do that, he comes to reconcile you to himself through the blood of his cross. So all that we can't wrap our minds around, all that God is, all that he does, we see a glimpse in Jesus in the scriptures, and that gives us a knowledge of his image. But to remember too, it's, it's so much more.
It can be terrifying. It can be scary. It can leave us in fear and foreboding, thinking, you know, we don't measure up. We can't measure up. But no, he says you can because he loves you, because he came to bring you back to himself, because he is your savior. Remember once again who he is. He's a glorious God who loves you, and he gave himself for you. He brought you to himself, and he holds you dear each and every day. The almighty, omniscient, omniscient omnipotent, and omnipresent God loves you. And nothing will change that. Because the cross of Jesus Christ shows us who he is and his love for us so much that he would die a brutal, awful death in order that we would be his own or that you would be his own. So know today, you are a beloved child of God, that amazing, all-powerful one who created everything has brought you to himself in love and grace in Christ. So today, remember, all things in Christ, all things were created in Christ, all things are reconciled in Christ. All things about God are in Christ. As scary or as comforting as that may seem at times, never forget, you are his beloved child, chosen, redeemed, reconciled, washed in the blood, given new life through his resurrection to live each and every day. Do that. Do that today. Do that tomorrow. Do that every day. Live in the joy and the knowledge that you have, you have Almighty God by your side through it all. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Holy Lord, bring me now to know you in a better way, to trust you with all my heart, and to know that you have done all things. You've created all things, you've given all things, and you bring me back to you. Because everything is in your power, in your control, in your goodness and love. For me, bless us, Lord, today with that knowledge, that certainty, that we are your beloved children. And in all things, you rescue us. In all things, you redeem us. In all things, you bring us to you. And nothing, nothing in all of creation, nothing, not princes or powers, not uh, suffering or pain, not cancers or illnesses or COVID, not even death, can separate us from that love in Jesus Christ. We cherish our Savior. We cherish his cross and we Listen to him. We follow him. For we know that he brings together all things for our good. So Lord, bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining with me on the chapel, our chapel, our devotion this morning. Uh, keeping in our prayers, many who are in need. I talked to uh, Randy Hart uh, yesterday, and uh, he's uh, doing well. Hopefully, he's going to be going to another rehabilitation uh, hospital soon. Uh, a different one than he was in before, but keeping him in your prayers for a speedy recovery and healing. Uh, keeping in prayers, my, my daughter, uh, Abby, as she flies home tonight. Much rejoicing in our household. Uh, also keeping in prayers, our sister, uh, Celeste. Uh, Kefelt, who uh, has had uh, the procedures and is now home and recovering. I spoke through Debbie last uh, yesterday and she was sharing with me that uh, it's still a, a bit of a road of, uh, of recovery. Uh, also keeping Paul in her prayers too, who is uh, her dutiful husband taking care of her and providing for her. Uh, a lot of prayers and uh, please continue to watch over uh, those in your midst and throughout this day, be a witness, be a witness of Jesus that he created all things, all things were made through him, all things hold together in him, and all things are reconciled in him. Allow that to be the, 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 the thought that stays in your mind as you go out to, to talk to others, to share with others, and to live with the confidence of who you are. Have a wonderful day. Know that I love you, and aloha.